Palette to Palette with Robert St. John and Wyatt Waters is made possible by a generous contribution from the Mississippi Farm Bureau Federation. Additional funding is provided by this and other public television stations and from viewers like you. Thank you. Dude, they gave us a TV show. This is pretty cool. Can you believe it? <laughs> they gave Good us a TV show. <laughs> they have no idea what's coming. But I'll tell you what, it's going to be a blast. Because if, if you're going to get two guys to do a TV show about Mississippi, you couldn't pick two more enthusiastic cheerleaders than you and me. I'm an artist. I like to paint. I'm a chef. I'm a restaurateur. I like to eat. I love to eat. Getting to do food and art stuff, that's what we're about. That's true. I, th I think I've done my job better than you've done your job. I don't know. I've, I've done a pretty good starving artist. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> We get to do it in Jackson, Mississippi now. So Jack, you got the sonic boom. Mm -hmm. It's the capital city. You got great restaurants, excellent museums. And probably the most world-class potholes. Yeah, true. So here's the deal. We're working on our fourth book. Hard to believe. A Mississippi palette. And the, the cool thing is, is while we're writing the book and creating the book, we're also doing a TV show. Everything's been leading to this. Everything's been coming to this place. So we have a blast putting the book together and working on a book together. But the thing is, it's just you and me. And we've had this shared experience that we've loved three other books. What's really cool now is that we have cameras with us and we're bringing other people in and they get to kind of experience yeah. this thing that we do, we which is- We share that. This is, this is what I do all the time anyway. I drive around looking for things to paint, things that interest me. And, and invariably there are things that kind of resonate with the place where I grew up, which is Mississippi. It's really been your entire professional career is, is driving around and recording Mississippi. You have painted yeah. from A to Z, and what in many instances you've been a chronicler of our history, and especially in Jackson as they have kind of torn buildings almost down around you as you were painting, you were recording that history, which is a very important thing. And uh, much different than photography or anything else, seeing through your eyes thing has been very important. It's been good for me because I've been there at the point when they were have had the wrecking ball literally hitting like the Lamar Theater. And every time, I couldn't see the ball, but every time it would hit that wall, these pigeons would fly and then would swing back and they'd go back and the ball would hit it again and they'd fly again. Did the pigeons make the painting? Oh yeah, the pigeons certainly made the yeah. painting. So I think that's what you've done, but that's what plays so well, and that's what people connect to in our books. They know the food, and people are very familiar with the food, but they're seeing Mississippi through your eyes, and you've got a great view from your standpoint in Mississippi. It's, it's excellent, and I think that is what has been uh, the connection with people, is the food and the art, and they've come Fine. together, and they just, they made this thing that we never even knew was going to be as big as it is. We all like to eat. We all like to look at stuff. Yeah, that works. One thing is so important, and we're, we're guilty in the South of not preserving a lot of our culture. A lot of times, you know, it's been torn down around us, and you've been so great about painting those things before we lose them. And one of the coolest things in Jackson is that Ag Museum. And that's just what they're doing, too. Yeah. They're and it, they're saving these things. And they're preserving that history. Yes, they are. <laughs> Shall I say yes, they are? Remember what was it about 15 years ago? Oh yeah, we came here, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. and what was going to be our first uh, television show? It was going to be yeah. a Southern Palette TV show, and it was uh, kind of this theme that we're working with now. And uh, our buddy Bill Dunlap sitting on the porch. Uh, well, it was on the porch. Yeah. He was going to be the narrator, and uh, 
you painted a catfish, and that's back when Jackson had catfish all over town, and uh, that was a great day. This is really what Mississippi's about. And then most Mississippi's got this rural background. My grandfather was the oldest of seven brothers, all St. John brothers. They all went to Mississippi College. I'm a Methodist today because my grandfather owned a pair of shoes. He was the oldest of seven brothers, and the two oldest had shoes, and they could go with my great-grandfather, who was Methodist to the Methodist Church, which was way off in the distance. <laughs> the five younger ones walked across the grass two doors down to the Baptist Church. So <laughs> I'm a Methodist because my grandfather owned a pair of shoes. <laughs> Hey, let's I'm check glad. out the general store. Get some pop. Oh, oh, oh you remember, remember that? that? Yes, indeed. You remember this one? That was a good one. Uh, from my grandmother's house, I would walk with my Uncle Dwight, and we would get those Mountain Dews and a bottle. Man, I haven't seen that bottle since I was probably five years old. I didn't think anything was a penny anymore, except something you found on the Kroger parking lot. <laughs> you know, a penny. Uh, that tastes like my youth. I could put one of these in my mouth, and it takes me back to riding through the Hillendale neighborhood on my Stingray Schwinn. Mm -hmm. I would take all my allowance <laughs> and spend it on Sour Apple Jolly Ranchers. It tastes like my youth, I'm just telling you. Mm. Are you a root beer guy? I'm a Barks root beer guy. Barks root beer guy. You know, that started, wasn't it, uh, on the Gulf Coast? Is that mm -hmm. right? I believe that's right, yes. Oh. This tastes like my youth, too. You drink in Mississippi. Sippy. <laughs> He's sipping Mississippi. Well, this is the store of my childhood. Yep. Back in the 1930s when he was a kid. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like in high school and applying for jobs, they would have denomination on, you know, the forms you filled mm -hmm. out. And I would all, I would write tens and twenties over there. <laughs> Consequently, I was self-employed for most of my high school cutting yards. It's a school, but we can't go in the school. Look at those desks, dude. The abacus. Oh, boy, abacus. I love the uh, abacus niche. <laughs> he was a great lawyer. Mm -hmm. It's hot. So we're starting right now with painting the cover. The cover was is really a condensation of a whole lot of things. We came up kind of brainstorming diff different, uh, different subjects, objects to put in there. I thought a still life would be a great way to show all the state. At the last minute, I said, give me 20 minutes. I'm going to make some cornbread. And I made some cornbread, and it, it made the whole painting work. You made cornbread? Yes, I did. Cornbread makes everything work. Dude, you've come a long way from beer dogs. Oh, yeah. Long way. You're rubbing off on. Uh, well, what can I say? I, you know, I know enough about working with Wyatt that you don't, you don't tell him what to paint. You don't do anything. I did, however, have one request for the cover, and it wasn't a big thing because you do it all the time. But I wanted a watermelon on that cover. Every bookseller in the world will tell you you can judge a book by its cover, and they will judge a book by its cover. So that's a big responsibility. It's a heavy burden on you. You've got to, you've got to portray Mississippi in one image mm -hmm. on the cover of this book. It's a lot of pressure. It was, but you know that's why we thought still life. We talked about this still life could combine a whole lot of elements of what it means to be Mississippi. And, and of course, you know, a watermelon's part of that, and skillet, and all the different subjects. And finally, we uh, put on the cover. Nobody paints watermelon like Y Waters. Man, it's one of the first things. Early on, we connected with the Beatles and with music, and the next thing was, dude, that guy loves watermelon. He painted a lot of watermelon. The first one I remember was a peace sign watermelon. Peace so, sign watermelon. 
People, I think, know that we do these dual demos all over the country. Really, we've gone yep. gone you know, everywhere. And, you know, I cook a four-course meal out of one of our books, and you do a watercolor yep. uh, still life. And um, we were doing one in New York, really, in the Flatiron, <laughs> in the Flatiron District of Manhattan. <laughs> and Wyatt wasn't sure if they were going to have a watermelon in New York City the largest city in the country with hundreds of fresh markets in every neighborhood. Y Waters gets on the plane in Jackson in his carry-on luggage. He has a Smith County watermelon. He carried it all the way up there. They somehow let him carry that watermelon on the plane. He got to New York. He walked all over Manhattan with the watermelon. But when it came time to do the dual demo, it was authentic. It was the perfect watermelon, and it was a Mississippi watermelon. Where there we were in the Flatiron District uh, in, in Manhattan, and you you painted a watermelon. That was fun. It's our fourth book, and it's your fourth cover mm -hmm. for a, one of our books. I think it's my favorite. Thank you. A lot of pressure on that one. Sometimes it makes you rise. Well, you you definitely rose to the occasion, and your cornbread rose. That's I was. That's exactly right. At the end, the camera guys and I ate the watermelon and the cornbread. I didn't get any cornbread. Sorry. We wanted our friends in Italy, mm -hmm. who have never visited Mississippi, when they got that book and they look at it, and they look at the beautiful artwork, and they check out the recipes, and they eat the food, that they know what Mississippi is like. Yes. That's what yes. we wanted that book to be Mississippi for people who had never been to Mississippi, mm -hmm. and an accurate representation of Mississippi. And yeah. I, th I, think, I think we nailed it. You know what the title of that painting was? What? One in a Melon. Oh, Pure Waters. Of all of the things in Jackson, possibly the best export coming out of Jackson all over the South during the fall is the sonic boom from Jackson State University. We're about to do one of the coolest things I predict, oh. maybe ever, heading into the band practice hall for the sonic boom at Jackson State. It's always the highlight of a parade for me to see the sonic boom. Let's do it. y'all are in the middle of uh, practice and everything, and I want to take time, but what we want to do is say thank you. Sonic boom really means something. I walked in here, and it, it hit us. This is an everyday thing for y'all. This is a very cool experience for us, and we want to say thank you for letting us in today, but thank you for doing what you do. What y'all do to showcase your talents in this state, across the country, whether you're out of Las Vegas or wherever you are, uh, makes us proud. And I've been I've been in this state for 55 years, so I just, we just want to thank you. We want to share with the rest of the country what we already know, and that's what a what a great band this is. People who are dedicated to to music. You walk in and truly a sonic boom and it just hits you. I, 
I've heard about, you know, you get the music, you feel it in your bones, but you really feel it in your bones, right. literally. Right, right, <laughs> and, and, and you have to. Everything that we play, uh, we coach the students to feel everything that they play it has to come from the heart. It's very physical. Right, it's very, very physical, emotional. very emotional. And this activity is very strenuous, and our students work very hard to represent the university and the Sonny Boom of the it South. It shows and it sounds. When everybody sees the Sonny Boom of the South, they know that they're going to get an energizing show. Now this is the light. Yep, front porch sitting. We need to, to whittle. That's what you do, isn't it? You yeah, get a stick and you get it. a knife and we whittle. That's what Buddy Epson did in Beverly Hills. That's it. Yeah. This shows kind of the rural uh, heritage and the agricultural uh, backstory of Mississippi. But in Jackson, you know, the culinary heritage is strong here. And it, it begins with Greek immigrant restaurateurs yeah. who really made this town what it is and put, put them on the culinary map and it comes from the rotisserie, and that's where Comeback Sauce came from. Come that's back, right, that's right. Comeback yeah. was first served at the rotisserie, later dinners. From there, it spread out to the Mayflower, to the Elite. Do you say Elite or Elite? My mother says Elite. Old Jackson says Elite. Yeah. So new people say Elite. Well, after church, we almost always go eat a pot roast, but when we're coming downtown to shop, and that usually meant buying blue jeans. Mm -hmm. uh, with McRae's, we would go and eat at the Elite. Um, that is that first generation. That's, man, that is the American dream. The restaurant business offers that for people. If I, if I had one restaurant that was gonna sum it up for me from the old generation, it would be the Mayflower. Mm -hmm. The second generation, I would say, would be the Howlin' Mouse. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a rich restaurant heritage in this town that, that now has spread. You know, I have strong memories of eating downtown. It was closer to McRae's yeah. is why we went probably because we walked on the street, you know, get a park. The rolls at the Elite. Oh yeah. My mother steals the rolls. <laughs> Roll puts them in a paper, you know, napkin and, and she of course they know she steals them. And um, and I felt really bad about that. And then one day I went out and they were throwing all these rolls out at the end of the day because you know they, they can't right. feed everybody. Right. Um, and I didn't feel so bad after that. Lucy's gonna hate you for that. I know. Okay, this is barbecue and soul food, or fried chicken. Food, fried chicken. Okay, soul and, food. And all the trimmings. James Beard Award winner. That's right. Somebody called Jackson the capital of soul food in the South. You think was that is that the truth? It's the truth. That's what we right. That's it. <laughs> I think they mistook my order it for a turkey breast instead. Of Tell us about the last name Bully. Well, that's actually my husband's last name. Right. Bully. That's all. B U L L Y. B U L L Y. Y'all will be the first bullies I've ever met. <laughs> we only bully yeah. the food. There you go. That's, yeah. it. <laughs> that's it. You're awesome. This is great stuff. All right. Oh, man, we are set. Malcolm, as you know, preserved music in this state. When uh, the blues artists were dying off, Malcolm was bringing them in and showcasing them at Howlin' Mouse. I always said we were a ladder club. We called acts going up the ladder and coming down. Mm -hmm. When we got ready to open this, this place called Howlin' Mouse up, we were very dedicated to what was the local cuisine. But we really were very interested in in the legacy part and at the same time branching out and adding live music to it. It's really Mississippi in one building. Enjoy it. Thanks for accommodating, it was great. Back to Malcolm, you know, uh, who started uh, probably the greatest um, tourism event in Jackson, which is the Mouse St. Paddy's Day Parade, which you and I march in every year. Oh, yeah, yeah. How many people? I think 80,000 80, 80, people. 80,000 come to watch yeah. that. You and I march in that, and the crew of Tux lead the parade every time. You met your current girlfriend after yes, the parade. Great associations with that parade. <laughs> yeah, it's but a great excuse also just to get people together. It's the congregation of central Mississippi yeah. and beyond, you know. <laughs> Wyatt has also been the grand marshal of the St. Paddy's Day Parade. 
Actually, it was more like that. I was throwing, and I was sore the next week like you wouldn't believe. And has uh, has birthed another parade, Joe Connor Brown right. and the Sweet Potato Queens, uh, who started in the Mal St. Patty's Day Parade, have now moved and started their own parade, the Zippy Dee Doo Dah Parade, in there in Fondren. It's a parade-rich town. Fun, you know, and it's that's what it is. It's a chance for people just to get together and have fun. Yep. And there's no politics going on. It's just get together. Let's have a good time. Let's get along. Now Jackson's a great place, but you know, a lot of a lot of areas go through cycles and up and down. And you know, during some of the troughs of what Jackson has been, there's been there's been Fondren. Fondren has kind of been a great catalyst for showing people that things can go through their difficult periods and come back on the other side and reinvent themselves. And the cool thing about it, and this is so Mississippi, is that the people in those neighborhoods yeah. rally around those neighborhoods and they fight for what they believe in in that neighborhood and Everybody's what they're going to build back. And people are investing money in those neighborhoods. And it just does your heart good when you're there. Yeah, it's contagious. And that's that's what the, the metro area and everybody, everybody needs, wherever you are, you need to see somebody doing something good. And you think, well, I can do that. When you were a kid, did you go to Brent's and get a hamburger yeah, yeah, prize? Yeah, I was on there. They've done a great job in Fondren, yeah. bringing this area back. This is a cool little southern kind of enclave of, uh, of hip restaurants and, and great shops, and there's art here. The central meeting place for you and me as we've worked on this book mm -hmm. has been Pig and Pint. It's somehow me coming from Hattiesburg, you coming from Clinton, we've always just kind of met there in Fondren and Pig and Pint, and the timing's been right. And the, and the barbecue's yep. good, too. Barbecue! <laughs> barbecue is the great meeting of minds. I think we can all agree on barbecue. I agree with that. <laughs> and there's a, you know, there's a method to this madness. Good. There we go. The worm we eat at Pig and Pine a lot. I, uh, I dig Pig and Pine. It's good barbecue. Oh, yeah. Some barbecue of my favorite is, barbecue up here in Jackson. It's one of the great things. It's not necessarily southern. The barbecue is southern. very southern. Thank you. The food is here. Damn, that was fast. Pass the time. You've never done the worm fall? It's know. on my diet. I grew up in Florence, Mississippi, and Clinton, Mississippi, and Jackson was always the big city to come to. Yeah. Jackson has always been an exotic place for me. So to come back and to kind of hang out with you, Sonic Boom, Ag Museum, killer food, good stuff. I love Jackson. It's a good gig, man. It's a good gig. It is. That's it's. it's you know, I get to hang out with my best friend. We get to uh, drive around and eat and check out the scenery and uh, visit with folks. And uh, here's the thing, it's the people, man. Yeah. That's what people ask uh, me when I'm away from Mississippi, you know, what it is about Mississippi. And uh, if you ask me, it's the people. Morgan Freeman uh, was in an interview once, and the interviewer says, you could live anywhere in the world. Why do you live in Mississippi? And he said, I live in Mississippi because I could live anywhere in the world. And then he followed it up with, I'd live here for the food alone. Now, <laughs> That's I agree, an endorsement. I agree with that. He said it, it just feels like home. So whenever he comes back to Charleston uh, in, in the Delta there, it just you know, it feels like home. I I enjoy going to little places that I would, you know, that I might drive past otherwise if I were just going somewhere else. I like driving and getting lost and finding all these little 
Mississippi secrets, little small towns. Mississippi is like one really large small town. Mississippi really secrets, I like that. I think it's perfect that we got our start in Jackson. Episode one, only place we could do it is in Jackson. But Agreed. the cool thing is we got so many more great places to visit. Yes, this is the springboard for the rest of the state. Yep, here we come. The paintings seen on today's program are featured in the A Mississippi Palette Cookbook. This beautiful volume also includes Mississippi Heritage Recipes, A Mississippi Palette Cookbook. Palette to Palette with Robert St. John and Wyatt Waters is made possible by a generous contribution from the Mississippi Farm Bureau Federation. Additional funding is provided by this and other public television stations and from viewers like you. Thank you.